Hi, my name is Susan Heald. I'm the textile conservator at the National Museum of American Indian in Washington, D.C., and I'd like to present part two of um, some tips for surface cleaning textiles and garments. We go through a lot of these sets of micro attachments. Um, I think they're sold under micro, micro vacuum cleaner attachments. So not for micro vacuum, but micro attachments. And so they have a universal adapter. Um, there's another part that fits on the nozzle. A hose that fits on like this. And you can also um, replace your hose if it gets all dirty and nasty. You can replace the hose in the hardware store. Uh, then we have these attachments that fit into here. So there's a nice little um, angle tool. And then the really nice thing is these, you know what, I'm gonna put this under the. So I've sold the, I've seen these sold online from anywhere from like $550 to $75, but usually they cost about $10. And I've seen these in hardware stores as well. So you have these nice little round, and they're, and they're these, this is a, I don't know if it's a nylon bristle, but they're, but they're, they're pretty soft. And I really like this one. So these are really good. These are these are good for getting into small areas, for instance. But then you have kind of have to put this, you have to put that part in your lap. So this is something you could go in and maybe just work on on little little areas like little bits of um, fibers or things that are that are you know stubborn. You can oh that works well. Work on it like that. Sometimes we also take this and put a little bit of the Velux fabric over this over the surface of this to get in smaller areas. And another adaption that I really like is using a, an eyedropper. So this is I've just taken just taken the eyedropper part um, and then put a piece of this is a piece of rubber tubing that I got at the hardware store. It's one quarter inch inner diameter, three eighths outer diameter. And I cut a little piece of that and put it over this eyedropper. And then it fits, it can fit really nicely into this part. And then actually you can take you can take this part out and stick it in there. Here's another one. This is a this is a, a different, this is a laboratory tubing, it's a silicone rubber. Let's see if that fits better. That fits a little better. So I like these because I'll get back to these in a second. Um, you know, you don't want to use a disposable glass pipette because I think they aren't durable and they can break really easily. But this has a nice polished surface. So this would be really good for vacuuming in little crevices where you have insect frass. So you can go in and pick up little bits of insect excrement or another thing you can do is go in, you know, under, under fur. But you want to be really you want to be really careful because you if you are dealing with in, insect infestation and trying to remove all those little bits it's likely that your your surface where they've been eating is really fragile but this this lets you get into small areas very precisely and you have to be careful not to overuse your vacuum motor when you have all these small attachments because you could fry your motor so there's another eyedropper method these are disposable pipettes that we sometimes use, and you just need a pair of scissors. Cut off the end. So we've got a very small, it's a very small end here, but it's kind of graduated. So you can cut it off to the size that you want. So that's a little bit bigger. You could cut it at an angle. Around the tip. Maybe easier with a smaller pair of scissors. So it's also something you can kind of adapt to what you need. You need to cut, let's see. Snip the side so it's a little bit open. This is fitting over the top. It's kind of a tight fit. But what you could do in this case is you could use a saran wrap or, or painter's tape to attach this. And then when you're, when it's gotten really 
kind of gross and disgusting, you can you can throw it away. I guess I guess this would be a more sustainable option because you can you can wash that and reuse it. But these are these ones are nice because you can really you can adapt your tip to your needs. And I've seen these on the um, let's see I saw these on the internet. I think they're sold as um, plastic eyedroppers or plastic disposable pipettes, and they come in different sizes. But these work quite well. This is a sort of assortment of hand tools that we sometimes use. Just some soft brushes. So if you have beadwork or quill work, you can go along. Um, this doesn't this doesn't work so well for textiles. Uh, for for some, well, you know, for some textiles, and depending on your soiling, it might work well. You can turn on your vacuum and brush, you know, brush the dust into into the vacuum. With textiles, depending on their surface, sometimes you end up taking hairs off the brush and putting them on your textile. So um, I like these fan brushes. They're well attached. These are synthetic bristles. This is this is a natural hair. I don't know what kind of hair. That's a natural hair bristle. This is a, also natural hair. Um, this is a synthetic and I, they're, the brush, bristles are a little bit stiffer. So sometimes sometimes I, I really like this one for brushing. Into the, into the vacuum. And again, you can see exactly what you're getting. It's very, depending on, on the type of um, the softness of the bristles, it can be very gentle. So you have contact, but it's very gentle. And then little tiny brushes for getting into tiny crevices that can help with insect brush removal. This is a, um, stencil brushes can be good if you're working with a stiff accretion. For instance, this in this um, bare hair, there's a, a stiff, there's kind of a stiff accretion right here, and maybe that would be good to Kind of work that out into the nozzle and see what you're getting. When you're dealing with the insect bodies, and hopefully they're dead because you've frozen or somehow treated your active infestation, using tweezers to remove the bodies and the and the and the larva is good because sometimes with the, especially with the webbing clothes moths, the webbing is actually holding the parts together. So if you were to go in with um, with a vacuum, you might just be pulling whole, whole hunks of hair out because the insects have eaten under the bottom part. So sometimes it's just best to pull out your your little insect bodies and fragments. With these are blunt tweezers. These are a little pointier. But you want to be careful with the pointy tweezers so you're not. But you know, it, it just depends. It just kind of depends on what your preference is, and again, the condition of the textile, the type of surface. Another tool that we like to use is this African porcupine quill. So this is like, this is made out of keratin, so it's the same, it's a modified hair, so it's the same as same material as your hair and your fingernails. And what I like about these is it has that pointy tip. Well, one tip is, is quite pointy, you know, not like the, um, not sharp like the American porcupine that's super sharp, it can, can get stuck in your finger. This is a little blunter. But it can be really good at, at finely dislodging little bits of, of webbing and frass very carefully. And it's, it's not like a metal tool because it has a little bit of that flexibility. And the follicle end is really nice because it's, it's blunter and larger and it's a little bit angled. So I think this is just a perfect little tool. You can get these from art supply stores and um, you can just look on African porcupine online and you'll come up with suppliers. Sometimes if you have an accretion, I guess they could be good for rolling over the surface to help break it up, or, or breaking up an accretion, like maybe again this, and with this um, area of kind of heavier soiling, you can kind of break it up a little bit very gently, and then do the vacuuming like I just demonstrated. But these are such a nice tool. Okay, so I think the last technique I'd like to show you is a no contact technique that I like to use, especially for um, garments and textiles that are on open display, and that maybe they're on open display for maybe longer than you want, and they're accumulating dust in a regular way, but you don't want to be physically contacting the textile to clean all the dust off, but you want to keep them looking nice. So this is, I can't really show this on myself, but this is where you could go on, on shoulders of a mannequin or, um, or a flat surface. 
So you just want to position, you know, whatever, however you are, you want to position so your um, the vacuum cleaner hose isn't bumping against your object. So this is this is just a this is a blower bulb, and it's sold um, for removing lint from um, photographs and negatives and camera equipment. This one's kind of old. It looks like that it's a rubber. It's oxidizing a little bit, but what I like about it is it's um, it's not as directed. It's pretty soft. It's easy on your hand. Here's an example of another one. This rubber is a little stiffer. It takes more takes more muscle to kind of puff it. But you've got it's, this has got um, a nozzle, so it's more directed. So you can really you can really blast directly, which may be good. For getting into interstices of quill work or, or bead work, it has loose dust on the surface. This type also has a filter on the back, so it's it's not it's kind of filtering the air before it puffs it out. That's nice. So this is how I would I would use it. I just take this part and puff the surface and collect collect the surface soiling. A lot of times I'll take this, the, the dust and analyze it and see if we're having construction particulate fallout or it's visitor dust or just to see what, what's coming off. Um, the thing is, if you have an entire exhibit full of uh, 40 mannequins on display, you really want to have at least one other person. So one, one person can do the puffing and the other person can follow around, you can change hands depending on how ambidextrous you are. And then, and then change change with your partner, so you're not wearing out your arms, because it can really it, it can really um, get to muscles in your hands and in your forearms. But I like this technique because, especially for garments on open display, it really helps it look good. But you don't have the mechanical action. I mean, there's still mechanical action, but it's it's indirect contact. Thank you for listening. <laughs>